I suppose I can list a bunch more than three players that I am looking for improvement in this Sunday when the Miami Dolphins travel to MetLife Stadium against the Jets. I mean if we're being upfront about all this, I'd like for every player, coach, and fan to be better on Sunday and every day for that matter. I realize that might be a bit tough and an unrealistic ask but hey I say aim high. For this article, I'm just going to focus on three Miami Dolphins players that have underachieved that I feel actually has it in them to be better than what they've shown thus far. These players are players that we all have thought about throughout the season or very recently. So before you go ahead and tell me, no duh, yeah I know. It's not like I'm going to name a player that you're all like, oh man I haven't even thought or have seen that guy's name all year. Good on CERN for doing that real tough digging. I'm not breaking news with these words here today. Instead, I just want to highlight a couple of players who have a chance on Sunday, partly because it's the Jets and the Dolphins have a bit of swag right now, who might ride that wave into some better play. I'm a firm believer in if you feel good you can work good. The team has momentum right now, which should make the players feel good. If you're a struggling player, there's no better time to be motivated than right now. I'm hoping for these players to feel good on Sunday. Liam Eichenberg I'm leading out with the guy who is giving all of us weekly fits of rage. We've all seen this week Liam's name get dragged for being the number one guy in the league for giving up the most quarterback pressures. Don't worry lovers of trench play, Liam is followed by two other Miami Dolphin linemen but I digress. The Dolphins traded up in the second round to take the tackle out of Notre Dame. At the time, I liked the move. Miami was in need of a right tackle, they have a left-handed quarterback and Eichenberg didn't give up a sack his entire college career. Makes sense to me. Since being on the Dolphins, we have seen a guy who appears to be a step behind in pass blocking, something he has admitted to, and that has not been on the same page with the rest of his extremely underperforming brethren. I know he's a rookie but these numbers would make any Miami fan vomit uncontrollably. The bright side is, you have to think the only way to go is up, and on Sunday he'll have that chance. Eichenberg will see a lot of former Dolphin Shaq Lawson. It's a real revenge game for Lawson. Hopefully, Liam knows that he has to pick his game up. I wouldn't be too shocked if the Dolphins look elsewhere if his poor play continues. Actually, who am I kidding? Eichenberg can give up 100 sacks this year and the Dolphins' management would probably rush to extend him. Andrew Van Ginkel as I assume he likes to be called because I know I would demand people call me that actually had what was his best game of the season against the Ravens last Thursday. He had five run stops while also having five quarterback pressures. Maybe Van Ginkel can see into the future and knew I was going to write this article so he was fully motivated to show me and the rest of the Miami faithful that he is the player we hoped he would be. That'd be cool. Or, perhaps Van Ginkel as was looking at last week's game as the time he decided enough was enough and it's time for a change in real Owen Hart fashion. Either way. What can't be disputed is that Van Ginkel has underwhelmed this year after looking like a budding stud last year. Too many times this year, I didn't even realize Van Ginkel was even playing. He sort of became invisible out there. I'm guessing some of that has to do with teams not getting surprised like they did last year. The word is out that Van Ginkel is a player that you need to account for due to him making high-impact plays last year. Van Ginkel has to overcome that if he doesn't want to just be a guy that shows up every few games. The defense as a whole is firing on all cylinders. Several guys are raising their game. Van Ginkel can be a guy that benefits from this new swag that the defense is playing with. If guys like Holland, Phillips, Ogba, Wilkins, and Howard are going to get the majority of the attention, Van Ginkel is the perfect candidate to get favorable matchups. I think he can thrive in that spot. I'm going to and will him to thrive in that spot. Preston Williams. Obviously, Preston Williams is on the thinnest of ices with the team. He's been inactive for a slew of games for disciplinary reasons and only has four catches for 67 yards. Pretty disgusting numbers for a guy who we all had high hopes for after his rookie year and his sophomore season when he was injured for the second half of the year. I like many thought that this was a make or break season for Williams. Sadly for whatever reason, it appears he doesn't too much care about what happens given by him not being able to play for a very injury-depleted receiver room because he couldn't follow some rules. With all of this, he started last week against the Ravens and the Dolphins still tried getting him the ball. It didn't amount to much, but they still went his way. 
I think they think like I do that Preston Williams can be more than just a viable receiver in this league. You can't teach 6 feet 5 with decent speed and Williams has that. On Sunday, Williams plays a team that he has done well against in the past. The receiver unit is still a weak one where a guy like Williams can go in and lock a position down if, and it's a big if he decides that he is going to put all his focus into it. If he doesn't, well then I imagine he is a guy that has around a 50-50 chance of sticking around come next year. Yes, he'll get picked up by somebody but he's a guy that I believe is starting to run out of chances. I hope he picks up his game because pairing him with Waddle and Jasicki is a decent start to a pass-catching room.